What's good, fam? Welcome to another episode of the Feed Me, Fuel Me podcast. There's and Jeff coming to you. Back at it. Just us this week. What's Two up, of man? us. Chilling, man. How you feeling, dude? Real good, man. I want to I wanna give some love to... Uh, to Max, the man behind the camera, yeah, uh, he just launched, um, or he was just featured in um, Voyager Phoenix. In Voyager Phoenix, yeah, and he did probably the most epic job I've seen in recently of connecting the dots. Yeah, it was really good in terms of the way things have manifested over the last couple of years. It was really good, and the part that fucking stuck with me the most, man. <laughs> This is there's a piece of the story where he's like, I walked a mile each way every day for a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's that's the hustle, yeah. that's the struggle, that's that's the the uh internal faith. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I don't know how this thing's gonna shake out. Yeah. I don't know when I'm gonna get a car again, you know. And uh it really uh drove home some of the dialogue that I've had in the uh, recent aftermath of, of publishing Inner Circle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it also ties into the the story that you just recently posted mm. about losing your ass last year on the, the Land of Lean stuff. Yeah. Right? Um, and I just find it really interesting because m- my story is full of all kinds of... Potholes everywhere. Lots of, lots yeah. of potholes, lots of, you know, probably more valleys than peaks. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, some of the 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 um, commentary that I've gotten about the book is uh, for people who don't know my story as int- intimately as you and, and Max would uh, or the people that were there along the way mm. is uh, they want to hear more about the shit. They want to hear more about those valleys and, right. and, and in greater detail and what's evolved out of that conversation is that it's not so much that they genuinely want to know, mm-hmm. but more so they want to, especially the the young entrepreneur and uh, or recent entrepreneur. They just left corporate and now they're doing their own thing and mm-hmm. they're experiencing all the, the adversity that comes with that transition mm-hmm. is like this want to justify their own suffering, mm. right? Right. Um, and misery loves company, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and you you Who always it, it it always makes you feel better to know that somebody's been there and done that and stuff right. like that. But like I honestly believe that the the hero's journey in terms of going through all that stuff on purpose is complete bullshit. Yeah. You know, if you come from a place of, of privilege and you have an opportunity to b- before you to create impact, do great things, and be a person of influence or uh, do great business or, you know, be philanth- philanthropic right off the bat mm-hmm. with no debt, your shit together, and, you know, like, you're already happy and fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Take that and run with it. Right. You know, like, it doesn't have to be hard if it's not. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that this, this, mentality of i have to self-sabotage and i have to create adversity uh to justify my existence and and make myself more uh give myself more credibility right um in terms of my impact and influence like it's a it's it's a bullshit lie Mm -hmm. it's it's not real and it doesn't have to be that way yeah you know i didn't plan to live out of my truck. Mm-hmm. I didn't plan to get evicted. I didn't plan to pawn all my shit. It's not like I sat in my room late at night and I was like, how can I fuck this up real bad mm-hmm. so that my story sounds better? Right. Because as I sit here today, if I could have not had to go through all that, mm-hmm. I'd choose out of it every single day. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's a part, man. I think it's uh, you. You see these influencers on this on social media where everybody's talking about the struggle, the grind, this and that, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's just it's nice to see. It's nice to have that that story that's going to catch people's eyes, get attention, make people like eyes well up and all that crap, man. But mm-hmm. I'm with you. If if your struggle doesn't have to be like that, then don't let it be like that. Because right. you know the story you're referencing where I lost two hundred sixty thousand dollars. 
And luckily, I'm in a situation where I've, I've never had debt in my life. It's just a money loss. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the response from that, people are hitting me up like, oh, you know, keep your head up. It's just money, like all this stuff. And I was like, <laughs> like I'm not just I'm not saying it for you to pat me on my back or like, right. you know, pick me up. I'm just fucking saying it mm -hmm. like this is the part of the story that nobody talks about. We talk about driving the fast whips, flying from here to there. But nobody actually gives the transparent truth about like this is how much money we fucking lose. And we lose more mm -hmm. than we win sometimes. Oh, yeah. Along this journey, it's like, what? <coughs> Consulting, I got out, started that business. I made ways very quickly because I right. understood the business. And honestly, just pure-ass luck. Sure. Luck and timing. Mm -hmm. Thinking it's going to be the same, going from transitioning from consulting, going into this online mar online digital marketing, building a product-based business. I'm like, oh, I'm going to fucking crush it. The mm -hmm. homies are crushing it. I'm going to crush it. Like, we're good, Jeff. We got this shit. We got this entrepreneur shit down. Like, yeah. you, you've crushed it before. Mm -hmm. Get into it. Start the daily vlogging. Fuck, okay, like, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. Let's fucking transition the, the vlogging into, like, building the land of lean side for the marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, it gets a little bit of traction. Okay, but we're going to sell more products with, you know, the, the videos that we're making. And this people are fucking crushing it in physical products. That shit fucking hits the fan. Mm -hmm. Patent <coughs> infringements happen. A lawsuit happens from a prior engagement for consulting. All this shit hits the fan. Business uh, expenses. I sit there. I sat there and looked like last week, and I was like, it was actually after the meeting with Curtis, where he's talking about how much do you want to invest in MPI and all that stuff. And I was just sitting there. He's just like, well, how much money do you have to have to give to it? I was like, and I thought I was like, after just doing taxes and doing all that shit, I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, I was like, honestly, dude, I lost two hundred and sixty fucking thousand dollars last year, mm -hmm. like straight up. The money that I would invested in MPI this year. Mm -hmm. And just like, and it just hit me. I was like, fuck, Jeff. Like, mm -hmm. why hasn't this shit fucking clicked for three years? Yeah. You know, and like you said, it's not because like I was hoping to fail forward, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fail fast and learn and grow. It's like, no, I didn't want to fucking fail at all. It's just like I went to succeed fast and keep succeeding even faster. <laughs> yeah. And just, uh, just by happenstance, it's like all these failures along the way that, yeah. that built up to what it is now. And it's like that snowball effect. Right. But, you know, it's just, when you sit back, yeah, you, absolutely. Like, did I want to tell that story of, like, losing 260K? Fuck no. I would have rather had 260K in the bank to use what I had to do. Right. But it just so happens that we have to learn that lesson. But I think that's 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 the theme, or that that's the real story. Yeah. The real narrative that people need to subscribe to. It's not that failing forward is the answer. It's totally... It, it's, it's part to of it. It's totally part of it. It's the part deal. of it. Right. right. Yeah. I know what you're saying. And it's to be celebrated to overcome these obstacles and like see your way through the adversity and come out all right on the other side. I'm not discounting that at all. Mm -hmm. However, the more important message and the, the, the truth about this entire your scenario, my scenario, Max's scenario mm -hmm. isn't that you have to go through this shit. Absolutely. That's not it. Yeah. That's not what gives you credibility. Are you willing to go through the shit? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's the bigger question mm -hmm. because the the adversity, the the crap times, the the valleys versus the peaks, all of that stuff is going to manifest differently. It's mm -hmm. going to show up differently for everybody. Right. Depending on where you're starting. And, you know, depending on what your constitution is, like right. your threshold for for stress and nonsense and all that stuff like that. All of that is part of the equation. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to go through it if and when it happens mm -hmm. that don't do it on purpose? <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly like what you don't mean. suffer, quote unquote, yeah. any longer than you have to. Yeah. Like that's it's just nonsense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't justify anything. It doesn't make your story any better. Right. Because if you told the truth honestly yeah you're like man i did this to myself yeah and i didn't have to mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like that's the real truth and like that's that's th that's how i wish more of us told the story right you know what i'm saying it, it's it's not and that's such a huge ask because above and beyond all the personal growth and development that you know our circle of influence subscribes to mm -hmm. like the the additional element of that entire conversation is just taking responsibility for your own shit right you know like yeah, yeah stuff happens but like how much of that is my fault like mm -hmm. for real 
You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the the patent infringement or uh, you know, I lost forty thousand on that fucking cryo deal. Right. You know, like I didn't plan that. Right. You know, that wasn't part of like the master plan. I'm like, ooh, it's gonna tell for a good story. I'm, <laughs> I'm right in six years. I need to make sure that I can sprinkle yeah. this in there. That's stupid. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But it's more important to identify a, you know, what you're responsible for, mm-hmm. and and b just like know that you're willing to go through the stuff mm-hmm. as opposed to forcing yourself to experience it. Right. Two totally different things. Oh, absolutely. And like, <coughs> you know, the entrepreneurship path or any path, for instance, it's, yeah. it's going to throw these, you know, these situations, these obstacles in your mm-hmm. way. But it's what you subscribe to. Like, you understand, like, this is the risk that you're taking mm-hmm. going into this. And if you're not willing to, you know, overcome those obstacles and learn from them. Yeah. And it's a, it's huge self-reflection. It's, you know, educating yourself every day, reading, surrounding yourself with a strong influence of people mm-hmm. and pulling yourself out of these holes because... People, you know, they'll look at what we put out there in the world, the podcast, the businesses and stuff like you live in an incredible life. And it's like then they see the story behind the story. It's like, yeah, life is great. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm struggling just like you're struggling. Sure. And it just looks completely different. So not putting that individual like don't put me on a pedestal like mm-hmm. we're here together like we're in this game together and like none of this shit makes sense to anybody mm-hmm. we're all just trying to figure it the fuck out right but we're trying to figure out our own different situations mm-hmm. right yeah and I, I completely agree with you man if you're not willing to you know go through your struggle for your reasons mm-hmm. not because this person said it or this person said it, like don't consume their story and take it as yours like yeah. oh this person lived that life they lost a hundred thousand I'm. Go- I have to lose a hundred thousand to be successful, right. like him or her. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Like, if you have fucking a hundred thousand in your bank account and you can blow it up and make it two million, without going through any of that bullshit, good for you. Like, Thumbs up all day. That's your story, and everybody will clap for you because yeah. that's your story. Mm-hmm. And that's what I love about Gronkowski, Rob Gronkowski, mm-hmm. the tight end for the Patriots. Yeah. He ne- <laughs> in his interviews, like he was like happy go lucky, you know, whatever, had fun. He never once said, like, I struggled in life. He's like, my life has been great. I've been wealthy my entire life. My family's been rich. Mm-hmm. I've experienced all this stuff. And he's, he never gave a struggle story. Right. As far like, he went through adversity, yes. Sure. But when it came to, like, the financial side of things, it wasn't, like, comparing yourself to, like, a Terrell Owens who grew up in poverty and this and that. Right. He owned up his story. He's like, I grew up wealthy. Like, I'm living a great life, and I'm living an even greater life mm-hmm. now, like, the way I want it. Right. That's awesome. And he's not trying to project and say, like, oh, this has been a hard-ass time. <laughs> and that's, that's why I really respect him. Yeah. Because, like you said, he's embracing what his story is and not trying mm-hmm. to say, like, you know, just make up some bullshit just to make himself, like, be liked more by the yeah. next individual. Right. So I think it's pretty cool. You know, the <clears throat> there's something to be said for the 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 empathy card. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, the, the people who don't have what I have in this moment yeah. will, will relate to me more or I will become more more human or or more relatable right if i have this story this rags to riches story right. or i lost it all and made it and ca- this comeback story mm-hmm. like all of that is just flavor mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but it's in a lot of cases a lot of instances it just comes down to choices right and you there's as we experience setbacks in life, you know, I hope that most most people listening are going through setbacks that weren't of their choosing, mm-hmm. you know, and that they've experienced enough uncomfortable situations along the way that they're mm-hmm. prepared for those setbacks, you know. <clears throat> you know, there's a difference between choosing to be uncomfortable to facilitate growth mm-hmm. and versus putting yourself in a potentially harmful situation to make your story sound better. Mm-hmm. That's 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 not it. That's not how the game needs to be played. Right. And that's how a lot of naive people are trying to play it. Right. And then they wonder why they never succeed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when you, we talked about it a lot on prior shows. It's like crafting your own story like, mm-hmm. and not adopting somebody else's story like are you actually doing what you want to do because it's your decision or are you taking a projection of what somebody else's idea of success wealth happiness is it's like Mm -hmm. and a lot of us are or a lot of us are carrying burdens from like what our parents told us what we saw on tv what this woman or this woman said Mm -hmm. and you start uncovering these layers like did i want the lamborghini 
at the time, yeah, I thought I did want a Lamborghini. But then yeah. why? The next layer, the seven layers deep like we always talk about. Mm -hmm. Why exactly did I want this? And then like, finally you get to the bottom, it's like, well, I, it, was, it wasn't really the car that I wanted or the house or whatever right. it was. It was the idea of what that car, I thought it would bring me. What it I thought represented. It would, yeah, what it represented. I mm -hmm. thought it would show people I'm successful, that I can be looked at as a higher value individual, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But when you uncover that layer, it's like, this shit doesn't even matter to me. Yeah. What matters to me is my family, my loved ones, my health, all of these things that have nothing to do with that representation of this car, this house. Right. And once I personally got to that level and saw, like, this is what I'm doing it for, the rest of that shit is off the table. Yeah. Like, if, I, like, if and when I can afford this stuff, mm -hmm. I'll buy it if I want it. That's if I want it. Yeah. But I'll do it because of my choosing, mm -hmm. not to show off and like, yo, I'm stunned on your ass today. Mm -hmm. Like, pull up in the Lambo, like, fucking, like, look at me. Right. Like, no, I'm not doing it to look at me. It's like, it's because I actually want to, I want this for myself or mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Yeah. And like you said, it's just, it's just a journey you have to go through. And if you're not doing the work on yourself, if, and I've, I've done it a lot, like, we can consume somebody's content so much where somebody's just like, you start speaking the language of that individual. Yeah. You know, the, on the other side of the screen. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, plan to do the work on yourself like you can take that hint of what they're giving you apply a little bit of it and forget right. the rest of the shit but they're going through shit mm -hmm. in their life where they're saying this thing on the on the yeah. television or screen where they're just like okay but you don't know the situations that are making them say this statement right. then years come around later mm -hmm. they'll come back and say well i didn't even i don't know what the fuck i was thinking five years ago i yeah. totally didn't mean that and then five years <laughs> down the road you're like holy shit dude i've been following your advice for five years mm -hmm. and it was totally fucked up right you and know? that's the thing. And people will take the our narrative, yeah. your narrative, my narrative, Max's narrative, you know, and they'll be like, oh, that's that's how I need to do it. Yeah, and it's, it's not. Like, no, 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 no. Find your way. No. And, you know, to if you're if you're listening to these stories from a uh, a position of naivete, uh, <laughs> I like it, naivete. It's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's French. <laughs> Put the French on it. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> It's it's easy to take the storytelling mm -hmm. as comprehensive advice. Yeah, and it's not. Mm -mm. You know, it's more of a it's more of a warning right. than anything else. Um, and uh, you know, as I describe entrepreneurship to people, what I love about the game that I play every single day is that the problems I have are the problems that I choose. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think that that's one of the most empowering things about running your own race mm -hmm. and taking charge of your destiny. Um, but I also, I realized that, <clears throat> you know, in I'm responsible for both my wins mm -hmm. and my losses, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I've gone completely the other way where, uh, and, and sometimes it, it creates bigger problems for me. Right. Uh, but I, t I own all of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this happened, <clears throat> nothing happens to me anymore. Everything happens because of me. Right. You know, the the great situations I put myself in, the shitty situations I put mm -hmm. myself in. But the like as I as I talk about in inner circle, the common denominator on both sides of the table is me. Right. That it's it may not necessarily be my fault, but I am partly responsible. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think that's real. Right. It's taking full accountability of everything, whether, whether or whether or not it has, you have anything to do with it mm -hmm. because you're like your role in that situation, you can take back and say like, this was my role that I played. Mm -hmm. What can I learn from that? I may not have been the cause of this animosity or adversity or whatever, but you still played a role in it. Yep. So instead of saying the, the you know, the victim mentality, this happened to me, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. happened because of me. What was my role in this? What could I have done better? Mm -hmm. How could I have handled the situation? And maybe, you know, you handled everything right. Yeah. But then <laughs> you keep, you got to go di dive deeper and put those measures in place. Like, okay, next time this comes up, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Absolutely. And you make yourself even more accountable. Mm -hmm. And I, I've used this reference. It was a long time ago, but it, it sticks with me ever since. Like Grant Card Cardone said it back in 2012 sometime. Okay. You know, he lives in Miami. Mm -hmm. Family lives in the, the for whatever reason, the, they had a power outage in the entire city. The whole city power grid went down. Yeah, shuts out. And Cardone's house you know, loses light, loses refrigeration, so the food's going bad. He has two daughters and all that good stuff. And he, instead of him, he's like, everybody's like, "Oh, Miami, it sucks. The, the grid went out." But instead, he looked at himself. He said, "It's my fault that the power went out." And they're like, "Why do you say that?" He's like, "Because I could have." 
had backup generators at my house so the food doesn't go bad, so lights are in my house, so my kids are eating. Mm -hmm. He's like, I could have put measures in place. Although the city's stuff messed up, it's my fault that the power went out. Mm -hmm. And like that's radical, you know, accountability. accountability. Yeah. Of take, and, but it, it helped him think through other possibilities, other solutions right. to whatever that big problem mm -hmm. was. Yeah, the power going on in the city wasn't his problem, but his accountability said, it is my problem. Right. And so if you can get to that level mm -hmm. of accountability, you start thinking of solutions way far beyond oh, your comprehension. Yeah. And other people are like, how in the hell did you think of that? And, that that's, and that's exactly what you're talking about is how you steamroll adversity. Yeah. Right. With that, that solution mindset. Yeah. Instead of dwelling on the problem, you know temporary as it may be in the, the the case of a power outage you know by being future thinking like how not necessarily how am i am i going to solve this problem today right but more so how do i put myself in a position where it never happens again right that forecasting right <clears throat> and that just moves the needle and allows you to plow through whatever that that in, that obstacle is so mm -hmm. that you can move on to being successful again, Absolutely. being being proactive, being positive, being, uh, you know, back in the driver's seat again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and move away from that reactive state into a proactive state. Right. You know, and that's where uh, I've noticed the people that are ultimately fulfilled in their success. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's where they play from. Right. Is in that that state of proactivity. Right. Is you know, okay, boom, I took this hit, whatever it may be, I lost, I lost this, I lost money on an investment or whatever. Mm -hmm. How do I make sure that that never happens again? Cool. Got it. Bam. Move on. Right. You know what I'm saying? As yeah. opposed to, oh man, like how do I make that money back? Right. Not the same thing. Exactly right. Not this, that shit is gone. It's gone forever. You know what and I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it's like uh, sitting at the, sitting at the table in Vegas you know, one, two, three, four hands too long. Right. You know, like that money's not coming back. Right. You know, you know like legitimately cut your losses. Yeah. You know, even if you need to sit at another table, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like that's, it's different. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, th I don't think people give, give it that much thought. Right. And like, you know, just from the adversities or failures and setbacks I've faced in business, it's like mm -hmm. consulting was great. Going to land lane thinking, all the positive things that are going to happen mm -hmm. fucking failed because why I didn't think of the negative things that could happen. Mm. So when that happened, I wasn't able to adjust. Okay. Right. Yep. So like now as I'm building this new business out, not only, and it's, it's not like an omen, so to speak, like I'm thinking of all the positives. Where do I want to take it? This is where it's going to go now on the counter. What are all the negatives that could happen in the mm -hmm. business? And I, I timeline that out. This yeah. is how it's going to look. Mm -hmm. And so now I can account for everything that I think can be, you know, the most negative extreme. But now that I have it on the map, when those situations, when and if they come up, mm -hmm. now I know how to handle that situation a lot right. better than thinking just like pie in the sky. Like, we're going to fucking hit the top. We're going to be a billion dollar <laughs> company in no, no time. It's right. nothing. Nothing's bad going to happen. Okay. Yeah. But it was learning from those mistakes of thinking just. I think it's not the thinking big. I think massive. I oh, still yeah, think massive. For sure. But then now to account for that, that <laughs> massive mindset, I think about everything that could go wrong as mm -hmm. well to keep yeah. me flexible, to keep I, me accountable. Yeah. And I, I think that that's uh, also, um, uh, that's reality. It's reality you know to a hundred percent. Like when you're uh, putting your goals together, <clears throat> you know, regardless of, uh, magnitude because all, all of that is relative mm -hmm. you know like for some people striving to make a hundred more dollars today is a big fucking deal that's a good goal too. you know and on a relative scale that's the same as you thinking i'm gonna grow this company to two million dollars yeah you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but at the same time to set these goals and not acknowledge the possibility of the adversity that could come your way as a result mm -hmm. The, the resistance as a, um, I got to get better at this fucking author, author thing, but in The War of Art, uh, amazing book, yeah. really easy read, but he talks about when you take that first step into uh, your your new goal mm -hmm. or being the a better version of yourself, the universe is going to deliver to you resistance, mm -hmm. and that resistance will come in 
the form of somebody telling you, somebody close to you telling you that you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the uh, financial investment or mm -hmm. the um, uh, the instant loss that goes into investing mm -hmm. that you have to work to rebuild. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, like all of those things are a manifestation of, of resistance. Mm -hmm. And all that is is a requisite to for you to acknowledge in the universe that you're serious about this shit. Right. You know, and the sooner that you can uh, push through that, right, acknowledge it for what it is, mm -hmm. uh, a test, if you will, uh, and establish comfort in knowing that, yes, I am willing to go through this mm -hmm. and know that no matter what level you're playing at every time you level up you're going to get resistance absolutely and just recognize that as part of the game and then find solace in the the idea that you are indeed willing to go through it mm -hmm. you're not searching for it right you yeah know, which yeah is like the whole point of this this entire conversation that's Cause absolutely because like, I'm, I'm getting it i'm getting annoyed with this narrative you know that mm. oh You've overcome so much. Like, I feel like I'm not I'm not credible because I haven't overcome the it, whatever. Mm -hmm. and it's like, good, congratulations. Right. You know, take that foundation and move up from there. Right. Don't backtrack just because you don't think it sounds sexy. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's the damn. That's the damn truth. That's just like a, I think a, I love that Wolf of Wall Street movie, man. Jordan, <laughs> it's like there's no nobility in poverty. Right. You know. Yes. And I, that it's, that highly resonated with me. He's mm -hmm. just talking about, you know, if if your girlfriend hates you, he's all good. Pick up the phone, start dialing. If this problem's happening to you, good. Pick up the phone and start dialing. He's like, you can change your situation right now. If this adversity is messing you up, good. That's awesome. Now do something to change it. Mm -hmm. In that case, it was picking up the phones and start dialing. Right. And that's how you got to think. It's a problem-solving world. Mm -hmm. And instead of sitting here, like, you know, just falling back, like, oh, it feels so bad for me. Like, no, don't feel bad for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to take care of it. It's like, I'm going to find the solution. Like, move forward through the shit. Yeah. You know? And like you're saying, it's just, don't just, like, apply these stories and just think, like, oh, you have to go through this, this, and this because you experienced, because I experienced, or Max experienced. Like, mm -hmm. those are our stories and ours alone. Yeah. You will never experience that. You may have flavors of that in your life, mm -hmm. but if you can bypass all that, like, the whole saying, stand on the shoulders of giants, mm -hmm. because the people who have experienced this crap before, they're telling you, this is what to look out for. So if you just listen to the advice, you can bypass all of the other shit mm -hmm. and get to where you want to get to a lot faster right. than hitting the same hiccups. Mm -hmm. That's why books are so important. And I can't think of the guy's name. It's, I heard a uh, few years back, mm -hmm. really smart guy, but he's talking about books essentially you're putting your soldiers behind you. It's just you're, you're building your army. So every book you read, mm -hmm. that's a new soldier that's behind yeah. you in your army. Mm -hmm. He's like, so the more books you read, the more army that you have you're equipped to go to war with. Yeah. And it's the same, like that that mindset, that principle of like the books you stand on help you see over that wall mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Like whatever whatever quote you want to use. Yeah. Those are paths. Those are the gyms in life that are going to help you succeed. Mm -hmm. You know, avoid the potholes. Go the, go, go the smoothest route you can go Right. without looking for like this old... Uh, you know, I had to break my leg 10 times just before I figured this shit out because mm -hmm. nobody cares. Like, if you can right. make it successful a lot faster than you right. or I have made it, mm -hmm. salute. That's what we're here for. Right. We're not here to see you continue to fail and lose. We're here to see you to grow mm -hmm. and prosper as fast as you can. For sure. For sure. And achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve in your life. Yeah. And I think that's, like, one of the most definite overarching themes. You know, you talk to Jason Phillips, who uh, had no money for groceries. Mm -hmm. You talk about... Uh, Cynthia Sassi, who uh, was putting rent on credit, right? you know, stuff like that. Like, everybody who has a story kind of like that or version of it will tell you that if they didn't have to go through it, they wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. So knowing that there's this archive of mentorship and these really awesome, successful people who have surmounted these hurdles ahead of you... Mm -hmm heed their advice, actively listen, and don't repeat those mistakes. Right. You know, you don't have to learn those lessons. Like, I, I look at business the way I look at <clears throat> growing up with my big brother. 
there's so much shit that I didn't go through because I watched him go through Absolutely, it. Absolutely. You know, there were ass whoopings I didn't get because I watched him get his ass whooped for it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I look at business the same way. Yeah. It's like I sh- probably shouldn't invest in that because forecasting, mentorship, and a number of other factors right. tell me not to. Mm-hmm. I don't have to. And I talk about this in the book. I don't have to go out of my way to prove you right trying to prove you wrong Mm -hmm. as my mentor. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of uh, uh, boneheaded decisions are made because, like, oh, no, just because you mess it up, I'm going to do it right this time. Right. It's like, nah, bro, history says otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, know, it it wasn't just me. Yeah. You know. Some cases I've seen people buck that system, but Mm – the mass majority of people aren't going to get those type of results, right? Right. You know, they said there's always a unicorn in the group that mm-hmm. can, sure. you know, set it up. But right. the majority of us, if we're starting business, going through shit, mm-hmm. a million people have seen what you've gone through, what I've gone through, and they've seen it at, you know, 10x, 20x, way larger mm-hmm. game than we've been playing. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, listen to the advice because mm-hmm. it'll make the road a lot easier for you. Right. You know, it's when you're when you're talking about, advice from a mentor versus somebody that uh isn't chasing the goal that you're chasing right a lot of this time a lot of times this manifests in in parenting right Mm -hmm. they're looking out for your best interests so that uh you know as you embark on something massive they're like no don't do that because it's going to be hard it's a projection that's 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 different than hey i've been there i've done that Mm -hmm. don't do that yeah those those are two that advice is in separate instances is coming from two totally different people, you know? Absolutely. So, so you, I always tell people, uh, cite your source. Yeah. Like, did they do it? Like, have they accomplished what you're trying to accomplish? Mm-hmm. Like who's telling you not to do something? Right. Right. Like where is that coming from? Is mm-hmm. it coming from experience or is it coming from fear? Right. Cause I'm gonna listen to experience all day every day yeah because you know I, i've tuned out fear yeah because that's what you said <laughs> that that one where somebody's hasn't even done it they haven't walked that path mm-hmm. it's a fear fear-based projection right the other's guidance <laughs> through experience <laughs> there you go you know yep so you're absolutely right man and it's like but i really love the mindset where you're talking about like um the hero's journey is bullshit you know it's like your hero's journey is your journey no you, matter how hard or soft it may be right it's still your journey mm-hmm. like embrace it and love it because yeah. that's your story. Be the hero of your own story. Yeah. You know, don't don't be the um don't be the the super villain and the hero in the same body. Yeah. You know, what I mean? and like yeah. that's that's what I see all the time. Yeah. Like you are don't be your own worst enemy. Yeah. When you don't have to be. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Be your best friend and the superhero. Yeah. You know, of your of your own story. Absolutely. And, and, and run your race. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. One of the hardest things to do. Comparison kills people. God, Lord. You know, I remember when I uh, when I opened PHX, uh, you know, I, I had this this fleeting thought. I was looking at gyms that had been open for, you know, five, six, seven years before mm-hmm. me. And I was like, this is where we should be. This is where we should, should be. And it's like, no, nah, man, you got to start with one member. Mm-hmm. Like, let's do that first. Yeah. Then we'll go get 10. Then we'll go get a hundred, yeah. and then we'll start adding services. Da, 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 da. Like there's, it's it's got to be a systematic approach. Yeah, and you know how fast you put those things into place. Yes, you are in direct control over, but don't think with the knowledge and experience in business that I was equipped with on day one opening CrossFit PHX. It is not realistic to think that I should be, you know, where. I don't know, Invictus or CrossFit, CrossFit New England yeah. is that, you know what I'm saying? Because they had to walk their individual paths, right. you know. Day one expectations for where you're at need to be day one expectations for where you're at. Yeah. Not, you know, you're not f- year five expectations on day one. Right. That doesn't make any damn sense. Yeah, it's perfect. It's, I love that, man. Because everybody's <laughs> starting line is different. Mm-hmm. In life, it's... Like in track, you know, everybody's starting line is the same. In life, everybody's starting line is extremely different. Mm-hmm. Some people <coughs> came from a well-to-do family. Some didn't. 
So the ones with the well-to-do families, starting lines here, and the others are back here. And there right. was a, a great video of where the guy represented it. You oh, know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the coach? Everybody's running. Er, he has like those 50 kids run the race. Yeah. And, it's uh, a start somewhere different. Yeah, it's a 100 yards. With the same finish line. Yeah. yeah. It's a 100-yard mm -hmm. field, the same finish line, still the same 100 yards you have to finish. Mm -hmm. But as he's going through the thing, who's, you know, who's never had to worry about a meal? You know, step forward. Then the kids step forward. And then some kids just stayed there. Who's never had to worry about uh, – who's never had a cell phone? The kids stay back. And it was – Yeah. It was crazy, but – Staggered the race. Staggered the race. And so, like, mm -hmm. you see all these kids – and I'm not going to get racial, but – Yeah. All the, all the Like, most of the black kids were at the very back, mm -hmm. didn't even take a step forward. Mm -hmm. And most of the white kids or the other kids were right. ahead. In at this the, particular video, in that's, this, that's in this, what he was talking yeah, about. Yeah, in this yeah. video. So the kids starting at the 50 yard line. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, so now you guys have to race to the finish line, and whoever finishes first is the winner. Mm -hmm. Who do you think won the race? Not the guys all the way in the back. Although right. they're faster, mm -hmm. they didn't have the head start the kids on the 50 yard right. line had. Which is the whole point. Which it, is the whole point. Know, and above and beyond black and white, yeah. like that. That's just life. It's just life you in know, general. What the hand that you're dealt, yeah. you know, is, you know, where you're positioned on that hundred meter track. Exactly. So like, don't. Don't get mad about it. Just do something about it. Absolutely. You yeah. Know? And like that was I love that video <laughs> for the representation. Not because of the race. It's mm -hmm. just like you take color, skin, right. race, sex, everything off that. Mm -hmm. Take your take your instance in pers perspective mm -hmm. and don't judge your story. Don't judge your starting line compared to somebody else's. Right. Because you just don't know. Like mm -hmm. enjoy your race and run it as best as you can. That's it, man. And that's what I really love about that. Yeah, so man. I think that's the best place to stop. So uh uh Couple of things. I'm excited to hear about uh, whenever you're ready to announce your new gig. Yeah, for sure, for uh, sure. Because I know that you're you're knee deep in the work right now. Um, so really excited for uh, that to to come fruition and and that announcement. Um, and then if you haven't already, hop on Amazon, look at uh, go find Inner Circle, uh, Focus and Fulfillment Habits of the Enlightened. And a lot of this discussion is in that book. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I really appreciate you guys uh, taking a look at that. And uh, the feedback's been phenomenal. So I really appreciate all the support that Inner Circle's received up to this point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my mission for Inner Circle is to put in the, the hands of 100,000 people mm. before the end of the year. That'll happen. So that's... That's the plan, man. Easy money, boss. That's it, dude. Let's so, get it. Hell yeah. <laughs> but uh no, nah, big you know, this this entire uh conversation was um you know, the the byproduct of uh Mac sharing you know, being well both of you actually being super vulnerable this week in uh you know, uh Mac's being published and then mm -hmm. your your um uh your post about everything that you're you're going through in the launch of this new phase mm -hmm. so i appreciate the both of you for you know being so authentic and 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 real about your journeys up to this point yeah because i think that is what makes this deal so special no doubt appreciate you man for sure it's been good so. max you need to become like a damn writer dude you know how to it was solid man like, dude like that's one of the best <laughs> honestly like the most well-written articles i've seen in a long time mm -hmm. Seriously, so that was really if good. You, if you want, if you want to see a stepwise representation of what manifestation looks like and connect, connecting the dots, uh, we'll put the link to Max's article in Voyage Phoenix up, and you can just read his story and how the dots are connected, mm -hmm. and what it looks like to really cash in, uh, put all your chips in on yourself. Real talk. So big ups, dude. Um, and uh, until next time, feed me, fuel me. Peace.